Hi everyone, it's Mike here. So don't forget to click that subscribe and bell icon to receive a notification each time I upload a new video. On five, four. So today I'm feeling in a kind of abstracty art kind of mood. Now this is a page that I'd done in my Dina Wakely Multisurface Journal a while ago. I'd stuck down some old uh, music paper um, just to put something in the background of the page with a view to using it later on. So I think I'm going to use this page today. It's just some vintage, like I said, music paper that was sent to me in Happy Mail and I think this will go um, really nicely in the background for what I want to do today. So what I've got, uh, my idea is the sun's shining, so I want to do something with um, some bright colours today. So I've brought out six colours from my Deacon Dean Wakeley Media Paint Collection. Now I'm not necessarily going to use all six of these colours, but I want them on hand because these are the kind of bright colours that I want um, to maybe introduce and have on the page. And I've got a paintbrush, so, which I've just cleaned because it was sitting in some grungy water because I'm terrible at cleaning my brushes. Um, but before I go anywhere with this, I want to add some gesso over the top. So I'm going to use white gesso and that's going to knock that um, paper into the background. So it's going to add a little bit of interest into the back. Um, but you'll still be able to see it through the actual painting or whatever it is that I decide to do. I haven't really got um, a complete picture in my head as to what I want this art journal page to look like. I want to do a little bit of, like I said, abstract art today, but I have no plan. So I have no real kind of idea of what I'm gonna do. It's more of an intuitive play than anything today. So that, I think, will do. Okay, so when I start to dry that, the music paper should start to come back through. So what I'll do, well, you can see it, there you go. You can see it through a little bit, but as it dries, it'll start to show itself a little bit more. Okay, so that gesso is dry, and as you can see, the music has come through a little bit more. But down here in the centre, I actually want it completely obliterating, but that will probably happen when I start to add the colours. So in order of darkness on the page, I'm going to, that's how I'm going to add the colours today. So I'm going to start with the darkest colour first, which is the lapis. So I'm going to just add a little bit of that lapis blue. I've got a little bit of a paint palette here. So I'm just going to add some of the lapis into one of those little receptacles. Actually, it might be easier if I turn it around so you can see it better. Okay, so that's the lapis blue. And I'm just going to take a little bit on the brush. Now I've almost dried the brush off. Um, it, it's a little bit damp, but not a lot. So. This is what I'm going to start to do. I'm going to create um, a kind of a focal point in the middle and then I'm going to blend everything kind of out. So it's going to take on a kind of diamond kind of pattern. But like I said, I'm going to do the dark colour 
first and then I'm going to add the lighter colours. I'm only using small kind of brush strokes. I'm going to take the blue right to at the edge. A kind of, like I said, a kind of like diamond pattern. Like I said, more of an intuitive play than anything. No real plan in my head as to how I actually want this to look or finish. It's going to be just let's see what happens. That's it, take it off the page. Okay, clean the brush, get that dry, and then I'll be back. Okay, that's dry, but it's still a little bit hot because obviously acrylic paint does retain the heat a little bit, and the page is just starting to curl a little bit, but that's okay. So the next colour I want to add is going to be the tangerine, the orange. So again, I'm just going to add a little bit into the palette and I'm going to again I've got a fairly dry brush I'm just going to pick up some of that paint and I'm going to just start adding those kind of blocks of colour into that but still kind of maintaining the shape that we've created or I've created anyway and it doesn't matter if it just goes outside. So the paint obviously isn't 100% opaque, it has a little bit translucent, that's fine. Again, just intuitive play, just adding brush strokes onto the page. Just where you think you need it. No real plan. Okay, that'll do. Clean the brush off. I'm being very strict with myself, as in not you know, when I think that's enough, I'm going to stop. Just dead, stop dead. Okay, and then get that dry again. Okay, so the orange or the tangerine is now dry. So I'm going to add a little bit more white, actually not white gesso, probably white acrylic, just to kind of put a base behind for the next paint to go over the top. Because obviously these paints um, are not necessarily 100% opaque, so adding a little bit of white into the background will just help the paint blend and stand. Somebody out the door, but Ian's downstairs, so he'll sort that. He's just had a parcel delivered when we actually got it, or the um, took hold of it. It was empty, there was nothing in it. It's obviously opened up in the post somewhere and and being lost so he's just talking to the um the postman about getting in touch with the company and stuff. So these things happen occasionally but you know when companies use inadequate packaging. It's a pain in the bum because you've got to sort it. Right, white's down. Now some of that actually has started to go like brown. The orange over the blue has gone like a brown colour. So this will add a nice bit of a base over the top. Okay, so the white is dry. 
and as you can see it has gone a little bit translucent too but that's okay so now I've got more of a white base to start putting my green down. And I can start feeding the green across and that's going to be a bit more opaque because I've added that white behind it. And then we can just add a little bit of the green breaking into the other colours. And then just start to encroach into that white space at the sides. And I think that will do for that. Okay, so that's now dry. So you can see the shine just from the actual acrylic paint there. So now I want to add some of the yellow so that's the lemon so we've done the lime we've done the tangerine and we've done the lapis so i've added a little bit of the lemon to my palette and i'm going to take a couple of dobs like there there over there up there and a bit more there and then i've got a spatula and I'm going to scrape it into and across the page. And make sure we do get some in that middle. And then if I need a little bit more like over here, just add a little daub. And then I'm going to be a bit more at the top, just pick some up with my top of my palette or the spatula and just scrape it across. And I think that will do starting to like the background there so I need to get that dry okay so the yellow is dry and as you can see it looks pretty good I'm starting to really like the look of the background I've also put down another um, polypropylene mat here because I want to use um, a credit card next so this time I'm going to use the magenta so I'm going to put some of the magenta down I've got an old banker's card and I'm just going to run the paint or run the card through the paint and then start adding in some magenta and I can follow the lines that we set with the lapis to start off with just to create a little bit of structure Let's use the smaller side there. And I love the way how um, the paint will just sit over the top. It's almost architectural now. So although we started off with that diamond pattern in the middle, we're now bringing it out into the outer extremities of the page. That's a good word, isn't it? Extremities. We like that. And kind of filling in, but still maintaining that white space towards the edges. So I'm happy with um, the magenta. So I'll just grab a baby wipe. Oh. And I'll just clean off the edges of that. But before we get rid of that, I just want to grab my fan brush and a little water. And I'm just going to mix in the remnants of that paint. And 
and I'm just going to add in some splats. Yeah, that'll do. Happy with that. Clean that off now. And then we can get that dry. Okay, so finally we have turquoise. So for this, I'm going to again add some more down onto the mat. But this time I've got um, the lid um, of a, an aerosol can, which is kind of a nice big circle shape. So I'm just going to spin that around, collect some paint onto the edges, and I'm going to just add some circles now, using that turquoise into the page. I'm just going to follow kind of that pattern that we kind of set with the lapis right at the very beginning. So kind of create that kind of cross shape, but this time out of the turquoise circles. It doesn't matter whether you actually go off the page. Actually, I can't go any further that way. I think that'll do. I like that. And again, <coughs> utilising the white, not the white, the, um, the blue that's left the turquoise, a little bit of water, grab the fan brush, get it mixed in, and then just add some noise into the background. And that will unify the colours. Liking that? Liking that a lot. Okay, so again, 90% drying time with this, isn't it? Okay, so that blue is now completely dry. And as you can see, it's really standing out against that background. But I think there's a little bit too much going on in there. So I want to try and kind of knock it back a little bit and bring that white background into the foreground a bit more. So I've added um, some white acrylic paint just there, just the Dina Wakely white. There we go. <clears throat> and I've got one of my stencils. This is the Carnival One stencil. And I've got a little piece of artist sponge here, or craft sponge if you like. And I'm just going to load a little bit of paint up. And I'm just going to drop the stencil down and just gently add in a little bit of what I call white relief. Just to kind of calm that colour down a bit. And I'm not pressing very hard either with the spot with the, the craft sponge. But I think it just brings that background back into the foreground again. And where you think you've got a little bit too much heavy colour, just start to knock it back. Just fade it away. There. Maybe just a little bit in the middle. So we'll just line that stencil back up with that. And then just lightly just go over. and just connect. There we go. Yeah, I like that now. Okay, so get that cleared up. Doesn't take long. Da -da -da. So we'll get that dried off and then we're gonna be ready for the final stage. The last bit um, of color that I'm gonna add, well I say color, is I want to add some black. Not 
just because we've got black in the background and it brings it in. I just want to add that final kind of pop, but I want to do it in a strange or different way. Now, this is the Dina Wakeley small bottles. I've also got one of these fine line applicator caps. Now, if I take the lid off there, you'll see that it has on it uh, a fine point applicator anyway. So theoretically I could do that, but I think it's going to be too thick. So if I put that over the top and screw it in, that fine point goes to the point there, which then reduces it down to an even finer point with that one. Now as long as I screw it tight enough, make sure I've got the paint, I can now start Add lines. There. I'm going to dry that off and then I'll be right back. So the black is now dry, but if you think it's too heavy, then like me, you can just grab your stencil again and just go back in and break it apart. bring that foreground back in again. And just calm it down a little bit. helps to bring it back to that foreground again. Okay, so once again, I need to get that dried off and then I'll be ready to do my final bit. Okay, so everything is now completely dry. I'm hoping that it's not too shiny, you can see it. But what I've decided is I'm going to turn the page this way. Because it's an abstracty kind of page, we can do that, so Fine, okay, so I've printed off on my computer a quick slogan. Actually, it's some lyrics from a song. So I um, printed them off on uh, sticker paper and then just cut them out, as in just cut the strip out, as you can see. Trust me to get right, a fiddly piece right at the very, very end. There we go. And I'm going to place that just across the top part of the page there on that kind of horizontal bit that we did. Make your own kind of music. And then just to finish it off. You can guess what the rest of the line's going to be. And then just put that underneath there. And I think I'm happy with that. I don't think I'm going to do any more at all. So all I'm going to do now is just to grab my pen. I'm not even going to bother going around the outside lines. So. That's pretty much going to be it. So I'm just going to sign it and date it. And then I'm going to call this page done. So it just goes to show that even when you haven't really got any kind of idea in your head, just put some paint down, have a play, splash paint and colour around, even if you don't want to achieve anything. Just have a play and just see what happens. 
I hope you've enjoyed watching that come together. If you have, please remember to give it a thumbs up, share the video with all your friends, and if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel already, you can do so by clicking the button at the end of the video. That's all from me for now. I will see you all again very, very soon. Bye for now. I'd like to say a huge thank you to all of my angels because without you, these videos would not be possible. Thank you.